This is how to befriend chipmunks. It's all about the art and science of chipmunking. Chipmunking is a great activity to connect with nature, connect with friends. Chipmunks provide endless entertainment. It's all about how to give and receive that chipmunk feeling. It's the feeling you get inside when little chipmunks put their little hands on yours and look up at you with those baby soft eyes as they fill those pudgy cheek pouches. In this video, you're going to learn a step-by-step -step process for befriending these furry little potatoes. First off, location is key. You'll want to start in an area where you know there are already chipmunks. It's most common that chipmunks will be in wooded areas with rock piles, log piles, and other structures that provide cover. And before you start on your journey to chipmunking glory, you're going to need to stock up on chipmunking inventory. I primarily feed chipmunks black oil, sunflower seeds, and peanuts. You should really stock up and be generous. In order to qualify yourself for the higher ranks of chipmunking, you'll need to stock up on an abundant supply. We're going to start with initiate level chipmunk techniques, also known as chipmunk long game. We call this technique chumming the rail. It's all about dumping out a heaping row of seeds to attract chipmunks to your general area while still allowing them to stay at a distance from you. Be consistent and patient. Do this daily and expect that it might take a couple weeks before you've begun to attract regular chipmunk visitors. And when they do show up, make sure to include a water dish. I put out a doggy bowl for them because it's doggone cute when they try to drink out of it. Chipmunk mid-game includes techniques to bring the chipmunks a little closer. This is scatter shot. When the chipmunks start to finish the seeds you set out, you can start to do scatter shots. The sounds attract them. It gets them closer to you. The way I see it, every chipmunk has an imaginary number for how many feet close they will allow you to get before they get scared and run away. And it's a different number for each chipmunk. For example, there might be a new chipmunk who comes around, but it will flee if you get within 10 feet of it. The goal is to use mid-range techniques to get them a little closer and make it a positive experience each time. Try to see if you can get them to eat food from 9 feet away, then 8 feet, then 7 feet. As you start to lower their trust boundary, then the next time they see you, they will tend to trust you at the level you finished with. This is how to make lasting progress. Just focus on getting them one little step closer at a time. An alternative mid-range approach is to do peanut pitch. For this technique, you progressively pitch peanuts closer and closer to you, getting the chipmunks more and more comfortable with being at a closer distance to you. If you manage to find a chipmunk's burrow, you can also use peanuts for a technique I call the mini cute sarlacc pit monster. Just leave some treats on the doorsteps of the chipmunk burrow. Chipmunks live in little holes in the ground with an intricate tunnel system. They typically have a bedroom with crunched up leaves for blankets. They also have a number of food storage rooms, kind of like having a pantry. And they also build drainage tunnels so that their tunnel system doesn't flood. They spend most of their winter nesting underground in their burrows. They wake up on occasion, go to the food chamber for some snacks, then go back to bed. Time for another water break. Now we're going to go on to some chipmunk short game techniques. This technique is called a proximity pile. You make little piles of seed in close proximity to you and the chipmunks will approach. I like to use seeds because it takes them longer to fill their cheeks. So they spend more time near you, getting used to you, and they start to feel at peace with you. At this point, you may have the opportunity to pet the chipmunks from this distance. Be slow and gentle with them. If they back off, just try again. Eventually, they get used to you, and you can give them a little massage behind the ears, just like a little puppy dog. You can also use proximity piles to give yourself an outdoor study buddy. By putting piles of seeds near your books or computers, you can create a cute atmosphere. Looking at chipmunks and their pudgy cheek pouches can be a great enhancement to your work and school studies. This concludes the initiate level of chipmunking techniques. If you're consistent, a time may come when you have officially earned your stripes in the sport of chipmunking, and a chipmunk may present its racing stripes to you and allow you to pet them. Rumor has it that when you touch a chipmunk's racing stripes, some of the chipmunk magic is transferred to you so that you can run faster, speak in high-pitched voices, and store more food in your cheeks. After celebrating your graduation from initiate level, we'll progress to level 2 chipmunking, the student level. But first, we have a bank robbery. This is what happens when you're out chipmunking and one of the chipmunks decides to bypass your offerings and go directly to the food stash. For the student level of chipmunking, we focus on direct feeding handoffs. First of all, we have the peanut okay. sword. When the food you've set out for chipmunks tends to run out, they'll approach you. And at this time, you can hold a peanut out 
just like a little sword. This keeps your fingers at a safe distance while you and the chipmunk get comfortable with the idea of hand feeding. The disadvantage of this technique is that the chipmunks tend to grab and go. They don't like to stick around too long if you're offering peanuts. However, the advantage is that when they do stick around, they make crazy, insanely cute faces when they stuff their cheeks. There it is. Oh yeah. That's it. <laughs> this next technique is called the bush baby. As a preliminary step, we would scatter shot the bushes and toss a bunch of sunflower seeds into them. This gets the chipmunks exploring the bushes. The next step is to approach the bushes using the peanut sword technique. What makes the bush baby chipmunk maneuver extra precious is the adorable little games of peekaboo. Here we go. Wait for it. Wait for it. Peekaboo. <laughs> this chipmunking maneuver is called the baby joey. Put some peanuts in your hoodie pocket, the one that kind of acts like a kangaroo pouch. The chipmunk goes in one end and out the other. This next move is the furry potato food plate. Turn your hand into a sunflower seed food mm. plate and try to serve the chipmunks in close proximity to you. Using seeds takes longer for the chipmunks to fill their cheeks, so they spend more time with you building trust. This can be progressed into chipmunk elevators. Slowly elevate your hand. They might let go, lower the elevator back down. They'll grab on again. They might let go again. Just lower the elevator back down and repeat until they hop on board. We got it. Going up. Chipmunk elevator is a necessary preliminary step to some of the really nutty chipmunking techniques we're going to go into later on. This chipmunk is going up and so are you. Let's continue onwards and upwards to the elite chipmunking level techniques. Bank robbery. This chipmunk really wants to succeed because if you want to rob a bank and get away with it, you have to be cute. And to do that, it helps to do the chipmunk jack-in-the-box we see here. Welcome to the elite level of chipmunking. We're going to start off with the flower girl technique. For this, you use a peanut sword or chipmunk elevator technique to attract a chipmunk to some flowers so you can take a bunch of pretty photos with them. Look at that contagious smile. Look at this candle in the darkness. Look at this. She's even better than the unicorn because she's real. This next method is called the peace treaty. You make a peace sign and you hide a little peanut treat in the middle of your palm. Now it's time for the fisherman's friend. Start by collecting the peanuts that have the stems still attached. We will then use these stems like fishing rods and see if we can net ourselves some little chippies. First, we're going to go fishing for bush babies. Here's one. I got a bite, I got a bite. Chipmunk on, chipmunk on. Oh, snap my line. We're going to try this again. Here's a good looking chipmunk lurking in the bushes. Looks like she weighs around two and a half ounces. Got it, got it, got it. Here we go. Bam, caught ourselves a bush ballerina. Now we're going to fish the railing. The feisty chipmunks use many comical fighting styles to try to take the bait. For example, here's the ninja. There's the slug. That's the drama queen. And this one here... Right here, boom, that's the wild cat. Now I've got the biggest stem ever on this peanut. So you and I, we're gonna use it to catch the biggest chipmunk ever. We're gonna go fishing for the big one, the lunker that lurks by the shed. You can see it standing there tall in the grass. It spotted the bait. It's coming over. It's go time. Here we go. The chipmunk is speed bagging the bait. It's time to set the peanut. And up, and got it, boom. Catch of the day, that's a five ounce chipmunk right there. We got the big one. <laughs> Catch and release. This chipmunking technique is the peanut pounce. You basically hold a little Go. peanut sword out and wait to see if the chipmunk will spring for it. You'll be surprised how fast and far a chipmunk will jump for a free peanut. It reminds me of how fast some humans move when they see the free samples at the grocery store. Here's an epic fail. Chipmunk misses the peanut, swings around the railing below, takes the peanut, and then just looks at us as if to say, I'm in to do that. With the peanut pounce, chipmunks have a tendency to stick around to make a bunch of pudgy cheek pouch faces before scurrying back to their burrows. This provides a great opportunity for some glamorous close-ups. 
Now let's take a moment for some rodent reflexology. Here's a little massage for some fast and furious chipmunk feet. Bank robbery. We're not going to let a little crime interrupt our rodent reflexology session, are we? Breaking news. Our cute little critter criminal has been apprehended at gunpoint. And while we're here, let's give this furry bandit a belly rub. This move here, it's called the chipmunk masseuse. This here is the peanut pursuit. Just present chipmunks with the promise of a peanut reward and you can inspire them to follow your lead. And if the chipmunk backs off, just put the peanut back in front of its little face and it'll start to follow again. Keep repeating the process until they make it all the way to your chosen destination, the peanut promised land. Peanut pursuit can also be used to help you achieve the triumphant chipmunk hat. Chipmunk hat can partially protect your head from sunburn. It can also protect a little patch of your head from cold weather. And it can also distract people from noticing that you're having a bad hair day. People don't tend to notice a few out of place hairs when you've got a live chipmunk dancing on your head. Chipmunk hat is good for parties. It leads to lots of laughs, lots of giggles, and lots of adorable photos and video. Chipmunk hat is the graduation move for the elite level of chipmunking. It is your chipmunking sport crown of achievement, so wear it proudly. But before we move on to the extreme level of chipmunking, here's a few bonus additional elite level moves. This is the Aladdin. You start by doing the chipmunk elevator, then while you're standing, you turn all the way around 360 degrees as you show the chipmunk the world. If you want to look like a hunk, here's the mustache a la chipmunk. This is chipmunk hand pass. Carefully drop seeds and chipmunk into the hand of a friend. This is good to help initiate newbies into chipmunking sport by giving them a mood enhancing dose of that chipmunk feeling. Here's our version of double fisting. We call this the Chippendale. And if you really want to impress your friends, there's the super wow chipmunk unibrow. This is the chipmunk smooch. If you can hold a chipmunk in your hand like it's the most precious thing in the world and then give it a little kiss, then you will truly know bliss. <laughs> Time for another water break. Don't forget to hydrate your happy little forest friends. Welcome to the extreme level of chipmunking. The first technique is called the house guest. For this process, you must leave the door open a crack. The chipmunk must enter on its own free will, take some goodies, and then exit. For extreme level techniques, you're really gonna need some serious chipmunk contenders. These are the extra special chipmunks that have extra special trust for people. Just a quick side note though, if a chipmunk gets inside your place on its own and is uninvited, just leave out peanuts and leave the door open a bit. Once it fills its cheek with peanuts, it will be extra motivated to find a way home so it can stash its supply. Here are some indoor versions of the elite level techniques. Here's an indoor study buddy. This is an indoor rodent reflexology moment. This is the massage parlor. It's an indoor chipmunk massage. Wanna come over? Now check this out. Wanna come into my house? I got some peanuts. I'm outside so I can find a chipmunk to do the critter kitchen helper. Come here. Come on. And once the chipmunk's in the kitchen, you try to trick them into doing the dishes for you. You help me with the dishes? You earn some of those seeds? I still haven't gotten this technique to work yet. I just wanted to show you something I'm up to. This next move is called the dinner guest. That's Little Cheeks the chipmunk sitting with Coke Bear and Nutmeg. You'll notice that Little Cheeks is the only one eating here. Coke Bear and Nutmeg haven't touched any of the peanuts. You know why? Because those animals are already stuffed. This next move is called the Furry Potato Portrait. And it's believed that this maneuver may bestow a special racing stripe blessing on those people posing in the portrait behind the furry potato. This next one is called the movie watching monk. You basically leave the door open and watch a movie with a chipmunk. Sometimes they like to have their own seat, but don't let them have control of the channel flicker. They'll keep insisting on turning it to Netflix. If there's one thing we all learned from Elvin and the chipmunks, it's that our little forest friends can be pretty successful as musicians. First, you'll have to get them to scale the piano. These little furry potatoes are legit piano technicians. I'm not just stringing you along here. But how do you get a chipmunk to actually play the piano? Because they only weigh a few ounces. Getting them to pounce on the piano keys is the key. 
Here's an original composition from the Ottawa Valley Chipmunks. It's called the Symphony of the Peanut. So sit back, relax, and let these magical notes send light into the darkness of the world. Quick break for a fisherman's friend. It's not my line. And for a final musical note, we top it off with a B-flat chipmunk hat. Someone else was watching and is curious about the piano lessons. Are you here for piano too? No? I'm sure you can picture yourself doing this next maneuver. It's called the bathroom selfie super friend. And here's a chipmunking move that requires special equipment. First, you'll need a willing chipmunk. You'll also need a bunk bed and your chipmunking A game. This is the top bunk chipmunk, featuring the bunk buddies, such as Elf, Glowworm, Pokeroo, and more. Hey Chippy, at least we didn't miss the Pokeroo this time. All this chipmunking can leave a mess. Hence the necessity for our next extreme chipmunking maneuver, the chipmunk vacuum cleaner. You start with a proximity pile and then you slowly and gently lift the backside of the chipmunk up and steer it around to suck up all the seeds. <laughs> to the chipmunks, this probably feels a lot like they just won the grand prize on a game show. Here's our final number from the extreme chipmunking category. This is Dottie the chipmunk and this is the bingo dabber. This little chipmunking number looks pretty intense, but I've done the bingo dabber before and it's pretty B9. <laughs> okay, let's recap everything so far. When making friends with chipmunks, there are four levels of techniques in the art and science of chipmunking. The first level is the initiate level. If you haven't made friends with chipmunks before, you'll want to start with methods such as chumming the rail, scattershot, and proximity piles. Level two is the student level. This progresses into techniques like the peanut sword, the furry potato food plate, and chipmunk elevator. From there, we progress to stage three, known as the elite chipmunking level. Here you learn fascinating tactics such as the fisherman's friend, the peanut pounce, and the crown jewel of chipmunking, the chipmunk hat. We finished at level four, the extreme chipmunking level. This involves some truly nutty activities such as the house guest, chipmunk vacuum cleaner, and the bingo dabber. You're now ready to embark on your adventures, but before you do, here's a few final messages to leave you with. Number one, regardless of wherever you are, make sure you know the laws in your area. Also make sure you know the relative risks in your area and use wise caution. Just for the record, we've never been bitten by a chipmunk or had a chipmunk cause any type of property damage. One time a chipmunk took a sip of my coffee when I wasn't looking. Another time a chipmunk sent a confusing text message to my wife. And a third time a chipmunk jumped at me and knocked my phone out of my hand. But that's about it. There's your exit ramp. <laughs> On ramp, exit ramp. Hey you. Hey, what about me? <laughs> that was exceptional. Number two, according to Paramansa Yogananda, we're all here for two reasons, our education and our entertainment. But how often do we take life too serious and forget to make time for fun? Adding more fun and leisure to your life can decrease stress, decrease pressure and decrease anxiety while giving us a boost in happiness, energy, motivation and ability to focus and concentrate. Joy can be a solution to help us with life's challenges. You deserve joy and always will. And chipmunks can help with that. And number three, here's a final idea to leave you with. Let's just all be even more in love with nature. Nature can inspire us. Nature can give us good ideas. Nature can elevate our moods. Nature can heal us. Nature can bring us closer together. Nature can provide endless variety and excitement. Even though you walk the same nature path, it's different every time you go because nature is always changing. The animals, plants, and landscapes are in constant change. So let's be passionate about nature. There are infinite varieties of nature for you to discover and explore. Chipmunks are just a tiny, tiny part of the total nature picture. They can be a stepping stone to appreciating and harmonizing with other animals, especially the human animal. Just like chipmunks, people can provide endless education and entertainment. It's an art and science with exciting rewards. 
You just have to make a sincere effort to be friendly and you're sure to have lots of friends and have a fulfilling impact. Because when we love greatly, we live greatly.